Hello everyone and welcome to this third part of the course in which we'll continue painting the scene. All right? Well, we've colored all this part here and now let's color the trees, the leaves and all the other elements. As you surely remember, we switched to Photoshop and from the color palette we got from the internet, we would pick the different tones using the eyedropper tool. We can also pick a particular tone and using this panel just slide these parameters and get a greener color, for example, to use it on the leaves. Remember to write down these numbers here and now we can switch back to ZBrush and apply the color. In this case, for example, we'll take the leaves then color and here we'll write down the color red 112 green 192 blue 99 okay so hit enter and now fill object perfect now back to photoshop we'll use this tone and these will be the trees in this case, both trees will be the same color, so it's no problem. 244, 182, 98. Hit Fill Object. And the same with the other one. Fill Object. OK. Little by little, we're painting the whole scene. Now, for example, we'll get this stone here and paint the monster with it. Click color and enter the values 239, 99, 99. Okay. We'll keep doing this, except for some specific parts, which will be the balls here, these ones up here, that are floating, that are separated, and if we hold Control, Alt, Shift, and select them, we can see they're a polygroup themselves. So we won't paint these balls and the lantern's glass either which are also a different polygroup. We can enable the double option to see both sides of the polygon. So those are the two things we won't paint yet. The lantern's glass and these balls here. Anything else we can keep painting. Let's get another color sample like this one, for example. We'll bring it down a bit and it will be the boat's color. One hundred and eighty, one hundred and fifty, and one hundred and ten. These parts here will be the same color, so there's not much problem. There you go. And we can also paint the puddles using the same color. Like this. So let's fast forward this part because as you can see the procedure is always the same. Take a color sample and fill object. We can also get color samples pressing Z when the mouse is over the color we need. Like this. See? And even tweak it afterwards to get a different shade. There it is. Now we can use this color for the hat, for example. Mushrooms will be a bit more complex since 
will paint them using different colors. If the part below, we'll paint some polka dots on them and we'll make a mask selection under all the mushrooms in order to transform that selection in a different polygroup and later make it in mid light. Okay, so we still have to paint the eyes of this character. We can slightly paint it black or gray, but let's use a wider color, like this. We can use a gray color on the lantern, okay? And now the only thing left to paint are the mushrooms. Before we start, I'm going to change this color a bit. So I'll hit C to get the color sample. And let's make it a bit darker. Okay, so let's let's get the saturation up so it looks better. That's perfect. As I was saying, mushrooms are separated in their own polygroup and obviously the best way to do this is to paint only one mushroom before joining all the objects and then duplicate it. But we won't do it like this because I want to show you the usefulness of polygroups. But well, I'll simply paint a mushroom and I'll fast forward the rest of them because it will be basically the same. So let's paint this one right here, for example. Let's get a sample from this color here and make some tests. Yeah, I think this tone is fine because it's similar to this one here. And we'll get a very similar chromatic range. Now we'll paint the stem white. And we'll paint some polka dots on the cap so it looks nice. So let's get this color here. Make the brush smaller and the tone wider and select standard and since we don't want to change the material we select RGB then just deselect ZAD and now we can start painting the same white like this We can also change the material because as you see it's already similar to the color we're painting it with and it's a bit difficult to see the results and notice the change. For now we're going to make everything visible again and set it only to changing the material. And now from here we try different materials. Hit fill object and we see the results. For example, we see here that this one could be nice. Let's take a look. Okay, this, this one's better. Let's get it closer, like here. And as I was saying, we'll keep painting the stem. Okay. Now that we have the stem white, we can start painting polka dots on the cap. Let's set this up. Very important, because I was painting with the material checkbox on, so now we set it to RGB to paint only color. And now we select a more yellowish color and we can start with the polka dots. All right. 
There you go. In the next step, after we finish painting the mushrooms, we're going to paint a mask below the mushroom's cap and turn that mask in a new polygroup. So we patiently and carefully start selecting all the mushroom skills like this and when we finish drawing the mask. We have to make sure it didn't go too far and that we just selected the bar below the cap. When we have all the masks done, click Polygroup and select Group Masked. And now, if we enable polygroups, we'll see we created a polygroup out of the gills of the mushroom. So now, we can select these parts separately and work much better. And later on, in Photoshop, we can choose which parts will illuminate the scene or which materials will emit light and set a light in those materials. So, as I'm saying, what we're going to do now, and I'll fast forward this part, is painting each mushroom using these colors and drawing a mask below each of them in order to apply the group mask option and create a separate polygroup with the mushroom gills. So, let's get into it. You see that changing the material sometimes gives us a better side of how we're painting. Okay, so now that we're done painting the mushrooms, we start painting the masks below each and every one of them. So we patiently do what we've been doing up until now, but we set up the brush and paint the gills of the mushrooms. It's very important for the mask to be at 100% and not to pierce through the cup with the mask, okay? Let's fast forward this and we'll continue. All right, so we have all the gills masked and all the mushrooms fully hand painted. So now to change the polygroup, as we were saying before, we're going to enable the Polygroup Viewer and then click Polygroups Group Masked. It may happen that the color that ZBrush automatically assigns to the new polygroup is too similar to the one in the rest of the mushroom. If this happens, you just hit Ctrl Z and try again until we get a distinctive color. Like this one, for example and now we'll be able to set the gills of the mushrooms to glow. Now hit Control shift alt in order to see the whole model, which we have finished painting and with the polygroups made. These balls here are the other element that will light up, but since we already have them in the same polygroup, we only need to set a color for them and in order to differentiate them easier later, we'll set them up with a blue color. 
and then click Fill Object. And finally, we have the lantern's glass, which are right now white, but we can paint it with a striking yellow so we can identify it easier. What we're looking for now is for the parts we want to glow to be colored with a distinctive color so it's easier to locate them afterwards in the texture map when manipulating in Photoshop and choosing the line points it'll be easier to choose only the right zones. Let's hit Ctrl Shift Alt, we'll select the glass and paint it yellow. So that's it basically. We finished painting the model and we have everything organized in polygroups like the trees, the rocks, the leaves, etc. Let's save the project. And in the next lesson, we'll see how to get the UV map in ZBrush, which will help us unfold the textures and export it to other programs. So, see you in the next lesson.